This is Jared Horak, and in this video, I'm going to analyze the Grade 1, $1 million cotillion stakes at Parks, Saturday, September 21st, 2024. This 12th race is for three-year-old fillies, and they're going to be traveling a mile and a 16th on the main track. 5.20 p.m. Eastern Time is the scheduled post time for this 12th race, and now we will go through the field. Number one in here is Power Squeeze, and she's 4-1 to one morning line. I read Ortiz Jr. is going to ride. This is a daughter of Union Rags, and she's six for 10 lifetime. She definitely likes to win races, and she also has a second and a third place finish. So she's one that exits back-to-back -back victories. In the grade three Delaware Oaks, she rallied for the win. The grade one Alabama, she rallied for the win. She won the Delaware Oaks by a nose and the Alabama by a head. And then prior to that, Torpedo Anna, a horse that she is facing in this race, uh, defeated her by six lengths and 16 lengths. But then prior to that, Power Squeeze was on a good roll uh, winning uh, some stakes races, the Cash Run Stakes. Uh, she won the Sun Coast. Uh, she also won the Gulfstream Park Oaks. So she's won multiple stakes races. She has a decent late kick. She should save ground behind the speed. Number two in here is Scalable. She seems to be on the upswing for trainer Todd Pletcher. She's three for nine with a second place finish, and she has a couple wins at this distance. Paco Lopez will ride back. He rode her last time, and she has back-to-back -back victories. Now, earlier this year, she was in the forward gal stake. She disappointed after breaking her maiden by six lengths. In that forward gal, she was fourth beaten four lengths. Then the Gulfstream Park Oaks, fifth beaten ten lengths. Put her on turf in the Edgewood. She didn't run well there. They later gave her a little bit of a layoff from May 3rd to June 29th. And she came back with a nice win on the main track at Churchill Downs at a mile on the 16th. And then last time, the grade three Monmouth Oaks. She stalked the pace from the inside post. And she was able to win that race by three quarters of a length. Gunsong won that one. She was the next out stakes winner, and then Gunsong's also in this race. So Scalable with Paco Lopez aboard will probably be stalking the pace in here at a price. Harifa uh, for trainer Brad Cox. It's the daughter of Bernardini, and Flavian Pratt is going to ride, and she's four for seven with a runner-up finish in her career, and she's three for three at this distance, and she's one that was in good form earlier this year. She won an optional claiming race at Fairgrounds, and then she won the grade two Rachel Alexandra, and then the grade two Fairgrounds Oaks. She was 5-1 to one in the Kentucky Oaks. I made her my top choice. She didn't run that day. Sloppy track. She was ninth beaten 18 lengths. Brad Cox laid her off from May 3rd to August 11th. She came back in a seven furlong stakes race. Uh, that was a prep race for this. She was the favorite from the inside post. She battled on the pace, and she ended up finishing a clear second there. Fibber got a better trip. Tarifa was able to hold on to second clearly. Uh, so now second start after a layoff, stretching back in distance stretching back out in distance, and I mentioned that she's three for three at this trip, so she's one that has tactical speed. Well, the main thing with her, I think, is getting her to relax. Sometimes she can get a bit headstrong. If they can get her to relax in the early going, stalking the pace, she'll probably run a quality race in here. Number four, Everland, 20 to one morning line. This is the daughter of Arrogate. She's three for 12 with a second and a third. She's never run at parks, and she's run twice at this distance with a win and a third place finish. Last time out, she was in an optional claiming race. She was third by a neck. She was placed second through disqualification that day. She had been running on turf previously. And then in her uh, other main track start in the Kentucky Oaks, that was earlier this year in the slop, she was fifth, beaten 12 lengths in that 14 horse field. She was 41 to one. So she definitely outran her odds in the Kentucky Oaks. She ran okay in that optional claiming race last time. She's going to have to run faster to threaten this group. Sid Amara, six to one morning line with Jose Ortiz in the irons. Another daughter of Arrogate, and Bill Mott trains this filly, and she's been part of the exacta in all four career starts, and she's two for three at this mile in a 16th distance. She was second in her career debut. That was a one-mile race around one turn at Gulfstream in the slop, and then back-to-back -back wins at a mile and a 16th at Keeneland on a fast track and at Churchill in the slop, rallying from well off the pace both times. Last time out, the grade three Delaware Oaks. She was 70 cents on the dollar. Power Squeeze just was able to defeat her by a nose, and she was clearly second best there. So she's in good form. She's lightly raced. She probably can run a bit faster in here with just her fifth lifetime start. And she's fresh as well, and she has a bullet work at Saratoga for this. Torpedo Anna, certainly the one to beat on paper. She's your four to five morning line favorite, and she's run eight times with six wins and two seconds. She's been outstanding this year. She started out her, her career great last year seven furlongs and a one-turn mile. She won those races by eight and a half and nine lengths. Then she was second in the Goldenrod Stakes. Oh, that was a, a decent enough effort. She was, uh, she was my tough choice that day. She wasn't able to win it. And then they brought her back in the Fantasy Stakes. 
uh, her first start this year, and she dominated that one, stalking from the outside post, post 10, and she won by four lengths last time. Um, then her next start was the grade one Kentucky Oaks in the slop, and she went right to the front there. She was aggressively handled. She won that one by more than four lengths. Grade one Acorn, chased from second from the outside post, dominated that race. Coaching Club American Oaks, she pressed the pace. She dominated that race. And then the grade one Travers against the boys last time out. Stalked the pace from the inside post, moved out in the stretch, came after fierceness. She got a clear lead, and uh, she wasn't able to run him down, and she just missed by a head, and she finished uh, a length and three quarters in front of Sierra Leone, and then those three horses were well clear of the rest of the field. So she ran a quality race, getting a good trip in that Travers. Now she's back a furlong in here, and a, a little bit more than a furlong because she ran a mile and a quarter last time. Now she's going a mile and a sixteenth. And she's run twice at this distance with a win in a second. And she has a bullet work for this at Saratoga. Brian Hernandez Jr., Ken McPeak, good jockey trainer team. Brian Hernandez shows a profit in route races. She'll probably set a nice tactical trip. She's faster than these on her best day. So if she just runs her regular speed rating, the others are running for second. Gun Song is next for trainer Mark Hennig. And this daughter of Gun Runner has nine starts, four wins, two seconds, and a third. Uh, I made her my top choice in the Gulfstream Park Oaks earlier this year, and she ended up finishing fourth, battling on the pace. Then I went right back to her in the uh, grade two Black Eyed Susan at Pimlico. They made her the favorite. She dominated that race. And then no threat uh, in the Acorn Stakes. Eight horse field. She was eighth, beaten 24 lengths. Torpedo Anna won that one. Power Squeeze was third. The grade three Monmouth Oaks. She was back second, beaten three quarters of a length behind Scalable. Last time at Parks in the Catherine Sophia, the local prep for this at a mile and 70 yards, she controlled the pace from the inside post against five rivals. She won that one by more than two lengths. So now she's going to be facing some quality horses in here. Third start after a layoff. She should be up on the pace. I don't know that she'll be around at the end. Mystic Lake, another one that should be up on the pace. And from that outside post for trainer Safi Joseph Jr., Mike Smith's going to ride back. And he rode her last time in the Charlestown Oaks, that full ring Half mile oval at seven furlongs in that grade two race last time. She won that one easily by more than five lengths, chasing the pace from second. So now she's going to stretch out to a mile and a 16th. And she has run this distance one time, but you have to go all the way back to November of 2023 in the grade three Mazarine Stakes. And that was at Woodbine on all weather ground. And she set the pace and she weakened to finish third. She's in really good form right now. Good efforts in her last five starts. And she's one that should impact the pace. Tough spot, though. So overall, obviously, Torpedo Anna is the one to beat. I'm not going to try to beat her in here. She's just so much faster and classier than these on paper. And if she just runs her regular race, as long as the Travers didn't take anything out of her, you know, facing the boys last time at a mile and a quarter, running her heart out and just missing. And, and now she's going to cut back in distance a bit here, getting some class relief. She's defeated multiple horses in this race. Uh, but if that, if that Travers didn't really knock her out, uh, she's probably going to win this race for fun. And then uh, as for my other choices in here, my second choice is the two scalable. My third choice is the three Tarifa. My fourth choice is the five Sidamara. So in my top four in the cotillion, six, two, three, five. And here's how I'll play this race. We'll play a cold exacta, the six torpedo Anna on top of the two scalable. And then a trifecta key, six over the two, three. And the three is Tarifa. Superfecta key. Six over the two, three, five, and the five in here is Sidomara. So don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment if you like this horse racing content. And if you're interested in my full card analysis, my full cards will resume with the Santa Anita Park Autumn Meet, which begins on Friday, September 27th. And you can purchase individual full cards, weekly and weekend packages, or the entire meet. You can head over to the runawayhorse.com on my sales page for more details. I'm also going to be covering the Del Mar Fall Meet later this fall and including uh, my annual two-day Breeders' Cup full cards, which in the Breeders' Cup will be at Del Mar this year, November 1st and 2nd. So I'm going to be covering all of that action at therunawayhorse.com. You can also purchase my full cards at todaysracingdigest.com. And if you want a bonus free pick, go over to my personal website, therunawayhorse.com. At the top on the front page, you're going to see a Better Bets blog. Click there. I have a national uh, best bet from around the country each day. I just post a free pick, and I try to do stakes races as much as I can. So check that out if you're interested. And until I see you next time, good luck at the races.